What brought you here, though? You. Oh, hold on, hold on. What are we talking about here now? When Caleb gets called out for stalking Tammy, he says, I don't stalk, I do my research, okay? And then Tammy starts laughing. She finds it funny. And in a weird way, she actually finds it kind of hot that he cared about her so much that he full sent it to her facility to be closer to her. It's kind of got her a little wet. Caleb goes on to say to Tammy and everyone else present in the room that his best friend's wife saw some stuff on social media. He adds that the post the wife saw was not just about Tammy, it was also about the facility they're all currently living at. But yeah, just hearing about how well somebody's able to do I said, hey, I can do this too. Right now, Caleb's trying to go for the approach of, you inspired me so much that I moved from my home state of Indiana to Ohio to be with you. Isn't that special? Huge red flag, but as stalkerish as this seems, what a creative way to shoot your shot. Usually when you get inspired by someone or a post you see on social media, you'll drop a comment, a like, maybe a follow, but that's not what our man Caleb did. He relocated to this current facility where Tammy's at. And because this man moved in a very sus way like this, I'm not surprised I see so many articles calling him a stalker. The funniest part for me is that when Caleb admitted this to Tammy, it raised no red flags for her, just made her insanely wet, and she was just happy that a man was flirting with her. In Tammy's mind, it's like the lengths that this man will go to be with me. He moved weight loss facilities to be near me. The majority of the fans of the show don't know Caleb. They don't know if they like him. However, the past couple of years, they've been watching Tammy's weight loss journey, which at times felt like a weight gain journey because a lot of times she didn't take it seriously. Binge eating disorder, otherwise known as BED, is a severe life-threatening and treatable eating disorder characterized by reoccurring episodes of eating large quantities of food. Another catastrophic grade red flag about this couple is that he proposed to her only after a couple weeks of knowing her in real life. I know, right? It feels like the cross over we weren't expecting because that seems like something they would do on the show 90 Day Fiance. However, these two are Americans, so I guess more of the single life. Tammy's someone that's very mentally immature. She's always sought a love connection. However, given her past dating history, it's clear that she's always selected the wrong type of dude that makes her life worse, not better. Now for a positive of her and Caleb's relationship from the TikTok videos, the IG videos, and the videos that they're posting in general, they seem happy, they seem like they get along well, and they push each other or they do the physical exercises together that they're doing at the rehab facility. I think that it's nice for her to have a companion in the rehab facility, and I like that. The question is this guy's motives because how he moved is very sus. Something I don't like is they got married so quickly and they've only spent time together in this rehab facility, so they don't even know what it's like living outside of the facility together. Naturally, as their relationship progresses, they're going to move out of the facility and probably get a place together. They don't know what life is gonna be like together if they push each other still for this weight loss journey because it doesn't end when they leave the facility. It's constant maintenance with your body concern. Tammy recently posted a TikTok with her husband, Caleb. Within a couple minutes of watching this video, you can tell that Tammy's mental health has improved drastically. She used to be so miserable, and I think a lot of that was she would see her brother's success with his weight loss journey. She would see Amy's success with her weight loss journey, and she wasn't achieving those milestones, and I think that she really internalized that and felt like a loser and felt down on herself. And I'm really happy to see that she's in a better place mentally. I glanced at the comment section and I saw nothing but positive comments, which was also great to see everyone coming together and just celebrating this milestone because it is a huge milestone for Tammy Slade. A positive thing I see about Caleb is that he hypes Tammy up, especially when she's working out. And he actually does a good job of giving her the support that I've never seen her get in past relationships. Also, no one knows her struggle like Caleb because he has the same struggle. In a way, this could be that back-to-back -back mentality where we're in this struggle together and we're gonna push each other to a achieve our goals. I see that happening, but it is risky because it could also go the other way. And as I said earlier, we've all seen Tammy use relationships as a distraction from hitting her goal weight-wise. Caleb seems like he's better than all of her exes. However, it still seems like a codependent relationship. Not to mention, if you're an addict in recovery, marrying another addict isn't the wisest decision to make. Right now, what's up? Let's travel together back in time to that part of the show where Caleb and Tammy have only been dating for one week. The family members are pleasantly surprised that Tammy seems like she's been in a good mood as of late. Then Amanda, the sister that bumps heads with Tammy the most, says it might have something to do with her new boo, Caleb. Then Amy says to the audience, we found out from social media that Tammy has a new boyfriend up there in rehab. That seems like it would be really tilting to find out that your sister's in a relationship from social media, but I'm not surprised that Tammy didn't tell them because she has a terrible track record when it comes to dating. In fact, why don't I introduce you to some of her ex-boyfriends right now? I met Tammy online. It was a BBW group. A BBW is Big Beautiful Women. 
This dude drove eight hours to come and see Tammy and prioritize her over his wife that was on dialysis dying. When Jerry was visiting with Tammy and her family, we found out that this man has six kids. Now, Amy asked him how many grandbabies he's got and he had no idea, which tells you everything you need to know about this man's character. Her other boyfriend we got to meet was named Philip. He was a fat girl collector from Las Vegas. This man was like Thanos, but instead of the infinity stones, he was collecting fat girls and he would post videos like, if you're not over 300 pounds, you're not for me. Philip and I are together. That's my man. I'm his woman. I can see a long life with Philip. <laughs> this clip is iconic. Tammy saying, I can see a long life with Philip as she twists her oxygen tube. <laughs> As a Tammy fan, there's nothing more triggering than when she enters relationships with feeders. Feederism, for those that don't know, is a fat fetish subculture in which individuals eroticize weight gain and feeding. Feeders are individuals who claim to become sexually aroused by feeding their partners and encouraging them to gain weight. Baby, when you eat that orange chicken from Cheesecake Factory, it does something to me downstairs. <laughs> Fans of Tammy and the show being tilted about her relationship decisions is not new. As you can see, throughout the years, she has prioritized these relationships with these feeders over bettering herself and improving her health overall. This Philip dude might have been the wildest of the bunch because he was a fat dating influencer. Like that was his niche, was dating these big women and saying things like, if I marry you at 450 pounds and you get down to 299 pounds, I'm out. Which real quick, that's the gnarliest take I've ever heard. If you try to get healthy and improve your life, I'm gonna leave you. Hi, you do. Oh, I'm doing better now. <laughs> a casual Norbit reference. That movie's so terrible, but so iconic in its own way. Kevin and I started dating like two weeks ago. I asked him if he was going to ask me to be his girlfriend. Like I had a feeling. And he just kind of confirmed, you know, that woman's intuition. <laughs> Woman's intuition, Tammy, this man moved from another state to be closer to you. Of course he wants to date you. In the cafeteria as they're eating, Caleb is dropping some Rizzy lines on Tammy like, right now we're only eating this little bowl of chili, but do you remember when we used to solo clear a big pot of chili IRL? Can't you remember like back in the days we could eat a whole pot of chili, a sheet cake, something like that. Caleb and Tammy seem very similar and being in his presence makes Tammy feel more calm and safe. She then admits to the audience that Caleb is very different from the typical man she would date. She goes on to say that Caleb is loving, caring, and sweet, so why not give someone else a chance instead of the skinny bad boys that she typically goes for? When you kiss the person that you're in love with, the whole world's supposed to move. That's exactly what happens. Let me know what y'all think in the comments about this, but Caleb saying to Tammy that he loves her only after a couple weeks of dating seems like love bombing to me. It's almost like him feeling safe is dependent on this overly positive image that Tammy has of him. Caleb goes on to say when they were kissing, the sparks were definitely flying, but Tammy hit a button on his chair and it sent him flying into her. I don't want to quote Debbie, but it seems like they have a strange love connection. You know, they seem cute in a way. I just feel like the majority of fans would get more behind this relationship if they weren't both at risk and if they weren't moving so fast. There's nothing wrong with being friends, without putting a title on it, getting to know someone before you enter a relationship. We learn more about Caleb. He admits to the audience that he's always had a sweet tooth, especially during times of stress. When this man was 17 years old, his mom unfortunately passed away and he admits that that destroyed him for a bit of time. Caleb gained a lot of weight after his mother's passing and then his dad unfortunately passed away in 2006. At Caleb's heaviest weight, he says that he was over 700 pounds, which means he would have to be consuming between 5,000 and 7,000 calories daily with minimal to no exercise. When Caleb was over 700, pounds he admits that at that time he was feeling very suicidal which takes a lot of bravery to admit so hats off to him for just being that honest it's a very difficult thing to talk about now the good news is since caleb transferred to windsor the facility that they're currently at in ohio he lost over 200 pounds losing 200 pounds in one year is something to be proud about good for him his current weight is 480 pounds i can be so upset five seconds around you everything goes away <laughs> every problem every person goes away like it's just it's us Caleb's got some good one-liners and he seems like a likable dude. If you've watched the show for a bit, you can tell right away that he sees a different side of Tammy than her family sees. The dynamic with Tammy's entire family is they all rag on each other. They all call each other fat and bitch and all kinds of names. With Caleb, it's nothing but compliments and positive reinforcement, which I actually like to see for her. A lot of times when I watch Tammy, it feels like she's an outcast because the rest of her family members are getting married, they're having kids, their lives are progressing. It felt like Tammy was 
was like that toy from Toy Story 2. Remember the penguin that had the broken squeaker that got placed on the shelf? It felt like that. It felt like Tammy was getting left behind. It has been a journey to watch Tammy's growth because at first she didn't want to go to the rehab facility, but since going there, she has a sense of community. She's made a lot of great friends there. This has been a very positive move for her life. You're so sweet and caring. Like, I know you'd be a great mom. Oh, wow, we got Caleb Casanova over here dropping riz bombs left and right. Caleb, how about we wait on the talk of children because y'all are both at risk now. So let's let's not talk about that right now. A lot of times he says things that every girl would want to hear. You know, contrary to your entire family saying you're a huge bitch, I think that you'd make a wonderful mother. You seem very loving and nurturing. If you've actually watched the show and you've seen Tammy's tantrums in the past, what would make you think that she would be a good mother if that's how she handles high stress situations? He always seems to say the right thing. So I'm genuinely curious if he's saying these things with the intention to build a long lasting life with Tammy, or he's saying these things to just make her more devoted to him so he can feel better and more secure. You have a way go. I just want to be, you know, I'm going to be a skinny bitch. No. <laughs> I hope you're not going to be a no, bitch. <laughs> You gotta be quicker than that, buddy. It's worth mentioning that before this relationship blossomed with Caleb, Tammy was insistent about going home to be with her family. Problem with this was Tammy's entire family was not prepared to take care of her 24 hours a day. Her brother and sisters have jobs, they have spouses, a lot of them have children, not to mention Tammy still has a track in her throat. That's a breathing tube that's placed in the windpipe to create an airway. If Tammy gets food stuck in there or it gets infected, she can easily die. In fact, she's almost died staying at this facility with 24 hour care. She's one of those people that believes everything happens for a reason and Clearly, the reason why she was meant to stay in the facility was to enter this relationship with Caleb. This is my favorite part of the morning. She makes my hot chocolate for me every single day. And for some reason, it always tastes better when she does it. I'm gonna Thank you, baby. You know I love you. I'm torn. I'm all out of faith. This is how I feel. I'm really hoping that he isn't just saying these things to make her fall in love with him so that he can feel validated. And it's really coming from the heart. We're going to see though. Let's be honest with ourselves. Tammy is not the most mentally sound human being that we have reviewed on this channel. Not like we review a lot of mentally sound human beings, but that's not the point. The point is if his intentions are bad in this relationship, it could be catastrophic for Tammy's physical and mental health. Caleb once again tells Tammy that he loves her so much and then he leads her outside because he set something up for her outside the facility. Caleb wanted to do something wicked awesome for Tammy, so he rounded up some of the patients and some of the staff, led Tammy outside, and proposed to her. Caleb said that when he led Tammy outside, she started getting nervous, her face started getting red, you know, all the things that make her so cute. Perfectly normal reaction that everybody else has. After three weeks of dating in this facility, Caleb proposes to Tammy after telling her that she's the most beautiful girl in the world. She stands up, they kiss, they hug, love is in the air. Tammy Slayton then tells the audience that she's gonna take a couple days to tell her family about her engagement to Caleb because she's not sure how they're gonna take the news. She goes on to say that she really wants her family's approval, but even if they don't approve, she's still gonna marry him because he makes her happy. I understand that Tammy feels like she missed out on a lot of life because she's been battling this addiction for a very long time. However, I feel like she's making hasty decisions and she's trying to get everything all at once when she should take her time and get accustomed to her new life and feel more comfortable in her own skin and keep achieving and hitting those goals before she tries to bring someone else into her world. Whether it's a relationship or a friendship, it takes work. It takes a lot of energy and I would like to see her for at least a year or two place that energy on herself before entering a relationship with anybody. In our next episode on Tammy and Kayla's relationship, we're going to be covering how her family took the news and everything that led up to them getting married. Let me know what y'all think about their relationship in the comments below. If you want some one-on-one -on -one time with me, please order a cameo. I'm the number one cameo creator in the entire world. Super thankful for y'all watching my videos. Comment below, subscribe. Love you, man. Love you, man. Follow me on Twitch and on Instagram right now.